Hi friends, how are you? In this video, we are going to create a CPU memory monitoring tool in C Sharp. Let's take a look on the tool that we are going to build. Click on start. And here we are. You can see we have a button. We click on it and we start monitoring our CPU and memory usage in lifetime using progress bars and performance counters. You will learn how to use a performance counter, how to update the background safely from another thread, how to monitor the CPU and memory using C Sharp. If you are ready, let's start together. All right, friends, so let's start by creating our project. Click File, New, project and select visual c sharp windows form app.net framework very simple let's name the application cpu mem monitor and select the path you want to save your application in let's go here or it's okay and click okay very nice so here I am in my application. What I'm going to do firstly is to add the controls. I will add two labels, one for the CPU and one for the memory. And just say this is CPU usage, sorry. And this is the memory usage. Very nice. As you saw, I'm going to show the usage inside a progress bar. So let's add two progress bars, one for the CPU in the same way and one for the memory. Let's name this as progress bar CPU and this as memory usage or mem and here we are. Let's add a button that will start the monitoring process say it's start and this is button start very nice now let's go to our code and see what we are going to do right click view code and let's start coding now if you want conceptually we have two scenarios in running this type of applications because we want to run in the background and update the interface we need to run our code in the background using threading or a background worker or a timer and so on. In my case, I'm going to use a timer, but be careful to use a system timer or a thread timer and not a form timer. This is because a form timer will run on the same thread of the interface and may cause some freezing and bad experience for the users. So be sure to declare a system timer when you use such applications so simply i will declare a static timer that will be used to run each three seconds and execute my cpu and memory monitoring code and get the values and update my interface very nice okay so what you have to do when you run the form i need to initialize this timer so simply say timer is equal to new system timer very simple this is the initializer or the constructor and then i will set the interval of this timer to three seconds so each three seconds the timer will execute the code inside the elapsed event we will declare the elapsed event in a little bit also we need to set the elapsed event for a certain method this is the method that we are going to declare in a minute and set the auto reset property to true so the timer will run continuously and reset automatically each three seconds and run its code very simple i think now let's declare the on time event which will run when the timer reaches three seconds each time and inside this event we will monitor and get the values of the cpu and memory very nice till now so how to get these values 
I will be using a performance counter object. Let's, let's create two methods, one that will get the CPU value and one that will get the memory value. So let's start by the CPU value. I will paste the method to save time, then explain it. Let's paste it here, and this is the get CPU value. I declared a new performance counter object. The performance counter object is a built-in class inside the .NET framework allows you to monitor and gather performance counters from your PC. So just import or use the system diagnostics namespace and everything will be fine. This mainly have three parameters. The processor, which is the category that we are going to monitor. Inside the category, we have the counter, which is our case, the processor time, which is the usage of our CPU. And the third one is the instance. When you say total, it means that we want to monitor all the CPUs together, all the cores together, and not a specific core in your PC. Very nice. Then the next statement is to get the value. I say dot next value, so I, I read the value. Then I will save for one second and run the next value again and put it in a return value object, an integer. Then return the value. Very simple. You may ask why I run the CPU next value method twice. This is because if you want to calculate the CPU usage or the CPU time, the performance counter will calculate it using a time difference. So you need at least one second to calculate the difference in the processor time so you can get the accurate CPU percentage. So this is the method. Let's paste the memory method in the same way. Now we don't need to sleep for one second. It's just for CPU. Just set the category for memory, the committed bytes in use as our counter. And here we don't have an instance because we are monitoring the full memory. We don't have cores like in CPU and just return the value. You can notice here that I converted this counter value to integer because the next value method returns a float. So I want to convert it to integer. You can keep it float if you want, but I am making integer just to round it and make it easier. Very simple. Now let's close these methods and now we are ready to run these inside our code. Simply say in CPU value, I declared a new integer and give its value to the get CPU value method. Very simple. In the same way, I will declare a memory value and set its value here. Now we have both the CPU and the memory value and we are ready to update our interface. Let's go back to our form and be sure to select the correct properties of the progress bars. Select the CPU progress bar, set its maximum to 100, set step to one, so it increases one by one, and memory usage in the same way. And now we are ready to update these process progress bars. Now pay attention to this. If I want to update the progress bar CPU and set its value as an example to CPU value, it will show a red line, an error, saying that an object reference is required for non-static field. Why is that? Simply because this event is declared as static. You can't access your form controls from static methods. I wanted to make this mistake to pay attention for method modifiers or variable modifiers. So pay attention for modifiers. Let's now remove the static modifier here. Remove all static. We don't need them as static. Remove the static modifier here from the timer also. And here we are. Now we can access the progress bar normally. In the same way, let's set the value of the memory to the memory value. And that's it. Let's run the code and see if everything is fine. Click the start magic button. Oh, we forget to handle the start event. Sorry. Let's go and click on the start button. Click event handler and just set timer to enabled equal to true. And let's run again and click on start. Let's wait for three seconds. Oops, and we have a problem. 
Awesome. This is the second point you will get from this video. Cross thread operation is not valid. You can't update. As I told you, the timer or the system timer will run in the background in a thread pool. So you can't access a control in the main thread from another thread. This will cause a cross thread operation. So how to fix this? The first method to fix this, which is not recommended, is just to say check for illegal cross thread is equal to false. Now this error will be overrided and not raised. Let's test this, click on start and click on start again and let's wait a little bit and you can see awesome. Our application is working normally and this is the CPU and the memory usage in our application is working. But we don't want this approach. This is unsafe. This is called unsafe updating of thread controls. So we need to update our form safely. Let's remove or comment this line. And what I'm going to say is the following. You say if progress bar cpu.invoke required then simply say progress cpu dot invoke and give a new action for the invoke method say new action which is this simple action i think the idea is simple so now if we invoke if the invoke required property is true for the progress bar CPU control, we will invoke and pass this action so we can update the thread safely. If not, just pass this here. Very simple. Again, I will do that for the progress bar memory. Just be sure to rename all of these and set the progress value here very nice so that's it and this is the safe update approach let's try this i will run the code and click on start and very nice you can see now i'm updating the cpu usage the memory usage our interface safely using a thread pool for in the system timer event awesome now let's do some modifications on this application I want to show the percentage inside the label here for the memory and the CPU. I want to implement the stop button if I want to stop the timer and so on. So let's start with two labels to show the memory usage and the CPU usage. Let's stop the application, go to our form and let's add two labels, one for the CPU and one for the memory. Just change this to 0% and this is to 0% also set the names it is label memory usage and this is this label CPU usage very nice in the same way let's go to the timer event here and we need to implement the invoke operation again for the labels so let's copy this and say if label CPU is re invoke required is equal to true invoke and set the text property now to the CPU value dot to string and add this percentage sign very simple and run this also here and let's copy this for the memory label this is the label memory usage very nice and let's get the memory value here paste it here and here and awesome very nice let's test our application now run the code click on start wait a little bit and very nice you can see now this is the percentage of our cpu and memory it's 60 percent for 13 percent for our cpu very nice now let's implement the stop and start operation for this button i will go to the button here when i click what i'm going to say is 
I will declare a new boolean value say start flag is equal to false it will be false by default and when we run the code for the first time I will say if the start flag is equal to false then run the application else stop the application then this will be enabled here and it will be disabled here false and the button start will be set here to stop and he will be set to start very simple so if the flag is false we will run the application we will start the timer if it's true so the timer is running we will stop it and set the text property to start and everything will be fine i think let's run the application again click on start very nice now it's stop here and the application is running we will see that in a little bit very nice now if we cl click on stop the timer will stop and we will stop updating oh sorry we forgot to set the start flag here to true to change the and here to set it to false that was my fault okay let's run again now and run it's now stopped now click on stop and i think now the operation has stopped we will not see anything now very nice let's end this lecture by modifying the shape of the form i will just resize it a little bit i will resize also the progress bars and set the labels here let's change the font of these two labels and make them maybe as 12 and set them to bold this will be better and that's it for our application let's do the last run run the code or the application and click on start and awesome this is the CPU memory monitoring tool using C Sharp. I hope that the lecture was beneficial for you. Please don't forget to share it with your friends, any new programmers, so others also can get some benefit. And don't forget to get the source code from the links in the description. Also check my other free videos and courses. You'll find all the links in the description below. Thank you for following. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, to like the video and to press on the bell for notifications. You can also view our other lectures. Thank you and see you in other videos.